Scrapbooking.com Magazine is proud to bring you the following feature article from our October 2010 issue, Surface Sampler Part 1 by Judy Kaufman for Sakura of America. When you hear the word sampler, do you picture a young girl with a needle, thread, and fabric? Or are you envisioning rows of candy in a yellow box with a chart in the lid explaining where to locate the cherry cordial? In both cases, a sampler is a mix of things. The maker of a stitch sampler learns, gains skills, and ends up with a visual record. She discovers her favorite stitches and motifs. The candy maker offers choices. We can stick with the assortment or decide to buy a whole box of our favorite. I thought it would be fun to incorporate pens and drawing surfaces into something similar. I'm calling it surface samplers. What's a surface sampler? Well, the simplest answer, it's whatever you want it to be. The goal is to get to know how pens and surfaces interact, to learn what's compatible, and to find out what you enjoy. Along the way, you'll be creating a visual reference, something to use as a source of information. And you'll also increase your confidence, choose favorite media, and enhance your creativity in unexpected ways. Now, be sure to set some limits. It's not necessary or possible to experiment with every pen and every surface on the planet all at one time. Surface samplers are a work in progress, something to which you can add over a period of weeks, months, and years. There are smooth and pebbly surfaces, coated, non-porous, and uncoated, porous ones. And in scrapbook papers, papers you've stamped, metallic coated cardstock, overlays and film sheets, well, you see why setting some limits is so important. Start by choosing your pens and surfaces. I decided to start with Jelly Roll Moonlight pens, working only on bright and dark color cardstock backgrounds and chipboard, plus a couple of printed and textured papers. I'll broaden the sampler to include light backgrounds and other surfaces in the future. I chose index cards with a printed grid and a small pre-made journal with colorful pages to show two ways of making a surface sampler. Next, choose a style. No two people will approach making a surface sampler in the same way. Some will be detailed and carefully made, like the stitched samplers made by girls in colonial times. Some will be wild and unplanned, filling pages in a visual journal with torn paper collage. Be sure to add whatever notes and information you think might be useful color number, and name for a pen, brand and source of cardstock, that sort of thing. Here are a few more ideas for creating your surface sampler. Glue surface sampler pieces onto index cards, add notes, and stir them in a box. Make a 12 by 12 sampler and turn it into a scrapbook layout or wall art. Make inches and write notes on the back. Hundreds of tiny surface sampler squares will fit in a shoebox or a plastic bag. Instead of simple lines and areas of color, draw. Use repeat patterns to create surface sampler squares in Zentangle style. Photograph your sampler and store it on your computer for easy access. Use the sampler pieces. Turn them into card fonts. Use them for a collage or a photo frame. Or glue them onto a corkboard. The only real rule is, there are no rules. To find the products mentioned in this article and shown in these layouts, check with your local scrapbook retailer. Browse our premium retail stores for coupons to a store near you. Thanks for listening. Don't miss the rest of the great articles and features in this month's issue of Scrapbooking.com magazine.